as a lender, if you go under contract and you know that there's going to need to be extensive association approval, or you know that something might take a little bit longer in the transaction, then you might need to give yourself a week or two before, before you lock that rate. Interest rates are more proactive than reactive. They're more proactive than we think. The federal interest rate is not directly tied to mortgage rates. What the federal interest rate does though, is it tells us that we're moving in the right direction as an economy, mm -hmm. as it pertains to inflation. Okay. That affects mortgage rates. The reason why inflation is slowing is because the Fed is accomplishing exactly what they've sought out to do, which is to make people stop spending money. There are people across our country that are hurting right now, economically speaking. It's scary. But that is what needed to happen to reset things because things were completely out of control post COVID. Investors right now with cash or with mortgage, they love condos. Welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. With over 20 years of real estate experience and selling over 150 homes a year, Laura Sanders is the number one REMAX agent in the state of Florida for 2021. Join us each week as we discuss how to make money through buying and flipping homes to renting versus selling and everything in between to, to join the conversation call in live 888-994-4995 studio a hi everyone and welcome to making money with laura sanders and i am your host laura sanders Every week we talk about something that will help you make a little money, save a little money, or maybe just help you navigate this crazy world that we live in. Today we're going to talk about mortgages and we're here with our wonderful mortgage lender, Max Fish with Nationwide Mortgage. Welcome, Max. Thanks, so, as always, for having me. Thank you for being here. So, a lot going on in the mortgage industry right now. Tons. Tons. Number one is back in July, was it July? July 1st, July yeah. July 1st, Hometown Heroes came out. Hometown Heroes um, had a hundred million the first time. Yep. How much did they have the second time? Well, this time around they had a hundred million. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So there, the first time was a hundred last July. Then in November of last year it was thirty-six million, and then they refunded it another hundred million this year. Yeah. Then it ran out yeah. from the last time we had a show. Yeah. And then all of a sudden a couple of funds bounced back. And why is that? Well, because when we're talking about the funds that are allocated for Hometown Heroes. The state gives funds, but it's almost like they're not, they're not, it's not a grant, it's a loan, right? So it's a lien that's put on somebody's house. And if they refinance, they sell, or if they move out of that and rent it and buy a new primary residence, those funds have to be replenished with the state. So the people that used it last year that are now refinancing, the people that used it last year that are now selling, those funds are being replenished. Almost so every day. you might always be able to, even though they say that the funds are out, you mm -hmm. can still ask your local lender or Max Finch yep. if there's any funds available. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, and it's randomized when they make those funds accessible. Um, but the, the reality, too, is, is that those funds are locked when somebody goes under contract mm -hmm. and the rate is locked, right? The, th those funds are being secured. Okay. However... When those funds, if, if that specific transaction doesn't close, let's say hypothetically, right. then those funds were never actually funded or used. So they just go back. So they the just pot. go back into the pot. We Correct. actually have a question from the audience. So, yeah, yeah. hi. I have a question. Sure. I've never heard of Hometown Heroes. I have no clue what you're talking about. Who qualifies for that? Originally, it about? was heroes, like, you know, people that were in the military. Okay, military. Yeah. Originally, okay, yeah. so that, and, and, and school teachers, they consider yeah. them to be heroes because I guess they got to deal with those yeah, kids yeah, yeah. in the school. So, so now, Hometown Heroes, as long as you work for a Florida-based employer. Okay. Not, so that gets tricky. It gets very tricky because, because sometimes... Like Home Depot really isn't a Florida-based... Correct. correct. So the employer has to be based out of Florida, okay. and you can qualify for, for the program, which is awesome. Okay. First-time yeah. homebuyers? First-time homebuyers. Okay. Florida-based employer, and you can't make more than 158000 a year okay. for whoever's on the loan. Got it. So now I have clarity. Thank sure. You. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, no problem. Of course. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So that, I see that funds, you know, keep coming and going. So that's yeah. good. So that's definitely, I think our audience needs to know that they should reach out to you and ask you, hey, can you check? And what do you do? You go into a database and you just kind of like... Yeah, there's a database that we have access to that shows if the funds are available um, and shows how much of the funds are available. Um, 
you know, really it's not, uh, it's not an ever changing pot, right? Even if the funds are being replenished, we have to have access to those from the state, right? And the state chooses when they're going to make those funds accessible and when they don't. Okay. Um, July 1st, they, they replenished another hundred million, but for all intents and purposes, those funds could have, be re could have been replenished months prior. It's just July 1st is when the state gave us access to them. Okay. Yeah. So the money that came out, is it still accessible? Currently today, no. So when did that end? That ended, uh, I believe it was two weeks ago now, three weeks okay. ago. Um, they replenished yesterday, or not yesterday, they replenished on Tuesday, but then they closed them again wow. yesterday. So, so Tuesday to, th th to, to Wednesday. Yeah. Yep. That now that doesn't mean that those funds were gone. It's just they didn't, they're, they're not accessible currently. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it, it's a timing thing. Can you extend the lock? No. So unless I've had it happen to me one time where there was an unforeseen circumstance yeah. and they granted a seven day extension. It wasn't anybody in the transaction's fault. It was something that happened with the IRS and there was a delay with something. Um, and, uh, and they let so us extend So how about an association days. approval? Hasn't been quite 30 days. No, so I had that, I had that situation, um, I had that situation one time um, and they did not ex it grant an extension for, for association approval. Um, simply because in essence, they're, gonna, they're going to require documents that say you have 30 days to get that and your lock is for 30 days. So in essence, you should Yeah, but that's, be that's to, a hard one because I know. the lock is 30 days. It's not 30 business days. Sure, sure. Right? So do HOAs- but It's 30 business days. 30 business days. So, so you're really put in a very, it's a, it's a quandary. I guess, I guess at the end of the day, if, you, if we could, as lenders, provide documentation that says 30 business days from right. the association, then maybe we would have a shot at extending. Right. But they don't, they, they extend for very, very few circumstances. And that's what makes it difficult. If, as a lender, if you go under contract and you know that there's going to need to be extensive association approval, or you know that something might take a little bit longer in the transaction, then you might need to give yourself a week or two before, before you lock that rate. And God knows what, yeah. And the thing is, is that I think that if there's a lack of communication, and I think that, I know we go back to this all the time, but yeah. being experienced as a realtor, as a lender, and, you know, listen, you could be a mortgage lender for 30 years, sure. but if you only close one deal a year, you don't really have experience. Sure. And it's an ever-changing business, right. as you know, right? And you need to have your, you really need to have your pulse on it. You yeah. really just have to have your pulse on what you're doing, so. Yeah. I mean, if you've um, had your license for 30 years, you've probably needed to change your business model by now, what? three, four, five times. I would think more than more that, than that even, maybe. because, yeah. you know, it was about, it feels like yesterday, but, and this is probably before you were in it, but 10 years ago, they were trying to get rid of mortgage brokers. Like they were, <laughs> they were trying to, you know, know, like they've changed how you guys disclose your money, how, yep. how the loans get funded. It, it's, it's really crazy, but yeah. I do want to put it out there that if anybody does want to call in, you know, we are taking calls at 888-994-4995 studio a and we definitely can answer any questions you have max can i know that we also have talked about in the past and i know we talked about dscr loans yep. and we've also talked about the rates and are yeah. the rates going to come down so i think we should go to commercial break and when we sure. come back i think we should talk about what are we looking at in the future absolutely so stay tuned and we'll be right back whether you're buying, selling, refinancing, or building your dream home, you have a lot riding on your loan specialist. Max Fish, a top 1% mortgage loan officer in the nation, will give you a same-day qualifying quote. Max Fish is committed to providing his customers with mortgage services that exceed their expectations, ensuring that you make the right choice for you and your family is his ultimate goal. Contact Max Fish today at 954-729-6933 or max.fisch at nwmcorp.net. At JK Closing Attorneys, we do all of the same things that a title company does, but with the benefits of being a law office. We can help with residential real estate, short sales, commercial real estate, refinances, 1031 exchanges, and FERPTA withholding. 
Contact JK Closing Attorneys today at 954-332-3111. Again, that is 954-332-3111. You have been watching Making Money with Laura. For more information, contact Laura Sanders at 954-650-0827 or visit her website at thelaurasell.com. And now back to the show. Hi everyone, welcome back to Making Money with Laura Sanders and I am your host, Laura Sanders. We're here today with Max Fish from Nationwide Mortgage and we're talking about interest rates, we're talking about getting free money. It's not technically free, but it's kind of free. Uh -huh. We're talking about free money, we're talking about interest rates. So what's going on? Are we gonna get in the fives or what? So for some scenarios, we're already there. Really? Right, and FHA loans, we're in the mid fives to upper fives. Conventional even, depending on a down payment, you can get in the upper fives right now with good credit. Really? Um, yeah, so we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. The, the fear here is, and not to be too negative, right? But the fear is, is that if we think that, and by we, I mean just the general population, right? If we think that we've unlocked the secret to determining how rates are going to respond and react, we are sadly mistaken, right? right. And, and uh, from what I'm hearing a lot in the market in, in speaking to clients is, hey, the Fed is going to lower the rate in the next couple of weeks, right. right? But what we need to understand is interest rates are more proactive than reactive. They're more proactive than we think. And the market isn't like their head isn't in the, the market's head isn't in the sand and doesn't know what the Fed is going to do in the, in, a, in the next couple of weeks. Right. The it's already built in to what we're seeing in the recent rate drop in the last 30 to 45 days is because of the news that the Fed is going to do what they're going to do. So the fear is, is that if they do anything else other than what the market is expecting them to do. That could, that could be bad for interest rates. But it's also like, okay, so now I feel like right now, which I feel it's a little slow. Sure. Right? Now, I'm sure you have a lot of people you've pre-approved, but they're going, well, I'm waiting to see what the Fed does. I'm yeah. waiting to see what the Fed does, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that do? It's like they're out looking so that maybe they can pull the trigger when the Fed does whatever the Fed's going to do. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that... I don't think it's going to be enough to make a difference right now. Yeah. Like maybe in two years from now, maybe they see it go down a point and a half and then they refinance. But I always am, I'm in the school of, if I love the home, I should make an offer and buy it if I can afford it. Sure. Well, let's talk about the dynamic there a little bit because number one, let's, let's myth bust for a second. Mm -hmm. Number one, the federal interest rate is not directly tied to mortgage rates. Okay. Right. The federal interest rate is directly tied to consumer debt, car loans, credit cards, equity lines. Don't what we have the, a lot of debt? <laughs> we do. What the federal interest rate does, though, is it tells us that we're moving in the right direction as an economy mm -hmm. as it pertains to inflation. OK. That affects mortgage rates. OK. That's number one. Number two, let's just look at recent history. And I have this conversation with clients all the time. Right. When they say what you just mentioned in December of 2023, so what, eight months ago, nine months ago now? In December of 2023, mm -hmm. there was a rate drop. So prior to that, rates were seven, eight percent. Yeah, okay. crazy. There was a rate drop in December down to the mid sixes. Why? Because there was news that came out in Q1 of this year that the Fed was going to lower interest rates. Well, guess what happened when Q1 came? The Fed didn't lower interest rates. So what happened to the, to the, to the market? It shot back up. Right. into the sevens because the market was building in something that the Fed didn't end up doing, right? Okay. And th again, if we try to say, if we try to say in our minds, hey, when the Fed drops interest rates this month, that's going to be very, that's going to be very impactful for mortgage rates in a positive way. Well, what if mortgage rates are building in that the Fed is going to decrease rates by a half a percent and they only decrease rates by a quarter of a percent? What happens? Yeah. Rates will go up and people will be confused. Hey, why did the Fed lower rates and rates actually went up? Mortgage rates went up. And you know what's funny, though? I'm in the business and I don't really hear about rates all the time. Sure. I mean, you would think that I would, you know, cross my, my feed across. Like, yeah. It's because people don't want to talk about it. It's very it, it's one of those things right now where consumers are into it a lot, especially if you're in the market to potentially want to purchase a home because there's this. There's this understanding among people 
right, that they want to time it correctly. Mm -hmm. And what they mean by time it correctly now is not about purchase price, it's about interest rate. The problem is, is those two things are directly correlated. Right. It's a simple supply and demand. If interest rates drop and more people want to buy, then what does that do to prices? <laughs> right. It drives them up, right? So you're on this teeter-totter of rates are high, prices are low, right, or moderate. Rates are low, prices are high, right? And so that's why we as professionals, people think we're just being salesy, but we're really not. Yeah, we're, I, we're just I just telling, really buy what you want. Yeah, exactly. We're, if it, you can it, afford it. If you can't afford it, don't buy listen, it. Listen, I've said it on the show a bunch of times, and I'm sure that a lot of people have heard it, but the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. <laughs> the next best time is right now. There's no, there's no. Because that will be twenty years it. from now, right? Correct. There's no timing it. We've there's talked no... about that before, and I feel that like I have clients that bought in two thousand and funny two thousand seven eight, right? Yeah. So imagine now their house is worth twice as much. They're sure. making money, but in but but when two thousand ten came, they bought in two thousand seven. They were upside down. Yeah. Right. So, but now you look at them and you're like, wow, you're a genius. Yeah. When they go to sell. So that is something that I am definitely a big believer in is that by today, because in 20 years from now, if you didn't, and I have clients, I have people that are still renters from 10 years ago. Yeah. And you're on a hamster wheel. Yeah. And you're, like, you're, you're never going to get off of it if you don't, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. listen. And then it's funny because, yeah, way back, it seemed like, okay, people that were renting, it seemed like a good idea because uh -huh. you don't have to take care of the, um, air conditioner, you don't have to replace anything, yep. right? But if you stay there for 10 years, your landlord's not going to give you new carpet every 10 years. Yeah. If you decide to do something, that's going to be on you. Sure. You know what's funny is that Dave Ramsey said this. Do you, you know Dave yeah, Ramsey, yeah, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. Dave Ramsey said, and I don't agree with everything he says, but he, he said that finances are 80% behavior and 20% math. Okay. And what's funny about that statement is you see it all the time that I'll use 2008, for example. People got so caught up in what the value of their home was at that time. They, they let it go. That they, they, they did drastic and irrational things where if you could just look at somebody in the face and say, it doesn't matter what your home is worth unless you want to sell. <laughs> if you are going to live right. there, if you are going to live there and you can afford your mortgage payments, then it doesn't matter what your home is worth because what happens is just like in the stock market or just like any of these things that appreciate over time, you have down yeah, it's and like then a mutual you have fund. back up. So if you look at the home values, there was like a year or two, 12 or 24 months where home values were down like 37%. And then what happened the following years da, 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 and, and tick back up higher than they were prior. Well, you hear, you hear something crazy. So I have a couple of rentals, right? And I had one rental that I had a guy in there for, he went in for 1400 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, 15 years later, I had him at 1600 That's like nothing, yeah. right? Do you know he called me and said, I have to move. I can't afford this. I'm like, do you know the market rent in that neighborhood is 2400 and you're yeah. paying 16 and I'm leaving you because you've been there for so many years? Yeah. And I'm like, and you can't afford it. So fast forward two days ago, I got a text message from a tenant that has lived in the property since 2011, 12. Mm -hmm. They've been with me. So that's 12 years. Yeah. They're paying 1800 for a house that I could probably get 3000 and they called and said, we have to move. We can't afford it. I'm like, what is going on here? Yeah. It's well, you know, the, in, in reality is an economy as a whole, mm -hmm. the reason why inflation is slowing is because the fed is accomplishing exactly what they've sought out to do, which is to make people stop spending money. There are people across our country that are hurting right now, economically speaking. It's scary. But that is that is what, and I, I don't mean to sound insensitive. I really yeah. don't. But that is what needed to happen to reset things because things were completely out of control post-COVID. The, the, the amount of, of money, the amount of money, I, I talked to, talk to people that, uh, you know, I talked to 17-year-old kids that put 
a thousand dollars in GameStop and overnight became. Do you remember when that whole thing happened? Oh, was it? Yeah, that and was overnight all fake, became. Though. Yeah, but it was all. But but my point is, is people were just throwing around money, borrowing against margin because everything was just exploding, and the Fed said, "This can't happen for an economy, or else things are going to burst." So right. that's why the Fed rate started to tick up because they wanted things to get expensive. They wanted people to stop spending money so that things could reset and then potentially start to come back down. Yeah, but if you look, um, it's not always right, Zillow, but a lot of times it does have some good information on it. If you look, you're seeing home prices coming down, coming down, yeah. coming down, coming down. And I'm just going... What is going on here? So yeah, it's because people don't want to. Don't I want have to. a listing agreement signed from four months ago. We were supposed to put it on the market. What ended up happening was, is there was a bunch of open permits on the house. Yeah. So I said to them, "Listen, you got to get these closed out." They had to go back and get plans drawn. It was like a whole addition added yeah. on that the um, contractor never closed out. So the number that we talked about four months ago and the number that we talked about today is, is I, I was just like. It's this is mind boggling. It's expensive. It's expensive for everybody. But again, in my opinion, there's light at the end of the tunnel because these things needed to happen to reset. And then hopefully we can have a new floor and then build from there. Yeah. If that makes sense. It does, but I'm I'm I know that definitely like we're seeing condos taking a huge so I guess how is that looking in the market for you guys? Like, what are the what are investors saying about that? Like, I know you have. Um, well, investors, investors with cash. No, I mean investors like for the mortgages. Oh, like, oh, got it. You know, it. you have like because you have different programs yeah, out yeah. there, and well, investors, investors right now with cash or with mortgage, they love condos right now. Because Invest, you, you're talking about investors like buyers, like investor buy. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Why do they love condos? They love condos because in myself included, I would love, you know, I, I think there's a lot of value in the condo market right now because I think that there's a lot of places that you can buy at good value while all of this work is being done. If you can find a way to attain it. Right. Because it's hard to finance those those units. Right. And so it makes it less marketable when it's not easy to finance. So all right. of this work that's being done, if you can get it at a good value, once all of this work is done on mm -hmm. these condo associations, concrete restoration, roofs, all yeah, of these things. Yeah, once it's done. But how do you... How like, do you break into your, the market? How, no, how do you protect yourself to yeah. know, like, are they done assessing? Yeah, I mean, you can never really know for sure. But what you can do is you can ask for meeting minutes of yeah. the condo association. So you could see what they've been talking about, what their plans are for assessments. You can review their financials, their budget, their balance sheet to see, okay, if anything does major come up, if they do fail this on a 40 year inspection report, do they have the money to pay for it? If they don't have any money in reserves in their balance sheet or their budget, then they're gonna need to get it from somewhere and they're gonna get it from all the unit owners. Right. Right. And that by way of special assessment. So there's, there's due diligence items that you can do up front to check to see if it's a safe investment. But I really think that if you can get into it in the next few years, the condo market, in my opinion, is going to skyrocket because all of these condo associations are going to have brand new everything and they're going to be easily financeable, which is going to make them worth a lot of money. So what I typically say is when you see the masses running the other way, you should run towards it. Yes. In general. In general. In general. Unless, unless it's like a, a tsunami. Yeah. Unless like a tiger like escapes the zoo. Yeah, but the likelihood that would happen isn't very likely. So, um, so yeah, that's so, all right. You'll get them with your guns. <laughs> oh, that was the inappropriate. That's what you said yes, something yeah, about the other day. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. So, um, what is a good way for people to reach out to you if they're looking for an amazing mortgage? Always, always by cell phone, by text, call any time of the day. Nine five four seven two nine six nine three three. That's nine five four. Seven two nine six nine three three. You notice he said any time of the day. He didn't say in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, if I'm awake, I'll answer. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're looking for an amazing realtor, uh, you could definitely give me a call. I definitely consider myself to be uh, an expert on condos. And you can check us out on my YouTube channel with a lot of our shows that are definitely um, showing you our knowledge on that. So... 
you know, we're kind of getting ready to the end of running out of time, but I always like to bring this one thing up because I actually had a client recently that didn't know about this and didn't know about the DCSR loan. So let's go over that real quick, just because that's a great investment product that yeah. is still out there. So um, I'm going to make you say it again, though. Did what I say it, it wrong? Yeah, what kind of loan is it? DSCR. DSCR. There it is. Did I say it wrong? Yeah, you said DCSR. 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 <laughs> DSCR. DSCR. <laughs> Whatever. We've done so, that a million times. I, I know. I have a problem with it. No, it's okay. Um, the DSCR loan is pretty much a no income verification loan for investors. Now, it's it's cool because it goes based off of market rent. So whatever the market rent is, if it covers the mortgage payment, then you pretty much attain the loan. But what I do want to talk about on to piggyback off of that is there's actually a new loan program out that we didn't talk about this. Is it prior. for Airbnb? So no, it's for primary residences that are no income verification. What? Yeah. Okay. We got one minute, so hurry up. Forget <laughs> so, about the other one. Let's talk about so this. Now, this so great. now, if you have 25% down mm -hmm. and you have nine months of reserves left over, for those of you who don't know, reserves are if you have nine mortgage payments left over in your account after okay. down payment and like closing costs. Is this like a bank statement loan? No, there's no. no income verification. Oh, okay. If yes, you have 25% okay. down, you have over a 680 score, you can get a primary residence without any income verification. No taxes, no pay stubs, no W-2s. We're not going to be doing bank statement loan where we look at income there. Nothing. And as long as you have nine months of mortgage. And 25% down. so risky. Well, they look at it and they say, okay, they're putting 25% down. They have nine months left over of their mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. And they have over a 680 score, so they have a history of paying things on time. That's the risk they're willing to take. So everybody, if you're thinking about buying a home, you do not have a job, but you've got cash in the bank. There it is. Um, give Max a call. And like always, want to thank you very much for watching and listening to Making Money with Laura Sanders. Till next week. Thank you for tuning in for Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. To join the conversation, call us at the studio, 888-994-4995-STUDIO-8, or contact Laura directly at 954-650-0827. Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. We look forward to seeing you next week.